Hello everyone, today's video is gonna be a bit different and I'm also gonna make an exception to one of my own beliefs where benchmarks don't matter because today we're gonna run benchmark apps on three phones Galaxy Z Fold 7, this one right here Galaxy Z Flip 7 with the Exynos 2500 and uh, this is the S25 Ultra that I've been using for the past 6 months or so and these two phones, the S25 Ultra and the Z Fold 7, are using the Snapdragon 8 Elite 4 Galaxy. And this one is using the Exynos 2500. First off, benchmarks are really stupid. Because when you get the scores, they don't really mean anything. Because when you play a game, it will mean completely different things. The reason why we do gaming tests is because when you buy a phone like this, a high-end phone, at most you're gonna do is play games on it and that is why I prefer to do gaming tests rather than running benchmarks because the scores really don't mean anything. What does having a thousand points higher in let's just say Geekbench mean? Well, I don't know because those scores just don't correlate to anything specific. Now the reason why I'm gonna run benchmarks today is because a lot of people are asking on the benchmark scores so let's do it. Um, I gotta tell you one thing is that even though these two phones have the exact same chipset, they won't perform the same because of how the chipset is tuned via software and also how the hardware is designed. This one has a vapor chamber inside whereby the Z Fold 7 does not. But then as we can see in the gaming test, the Z Fold 7 performs a lot better than the S25 Ultra because of how it is tuned. So I will be running just two benchmark apps but then within them they have a lot of subtests. I'll be doing the benchmarks like this so I will just start off with Geekbench first. I know the camera angle isn't the best but this is the best that I can do here because uh, I need the phone to be like this because if I'm gonna touch the phone to the surface of the table then that will make it overheat even faster. It's a good thing that all of the phones can stand on its own, kind of. So we start off by doing Geekbench CPU first. So with the first test done, I'll just show you the screenshot on the screen here because it's very difficult to fit all three devices on the screen for you guys to see. So uh, one thing that I have to say is that the score for both the S25 Ultra and the Z Fold 7 are very similar but the multi-core score is very low for the Z Fold 7 in comparison. The Exynos 2500 is actually an interesting choice because they still maintain the small cores and in fact it is actually much more efficient than the Z Fold 7 because from our battery life test the Z Fold 7 actually has reduced battery life compared to before whereas the Exynos 2500 has improved efficiency over the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 from last year. So now let's run the uh, second test which is the Geekbench GPU and I'm gonna use OpenCL first because there's two APIs we got OpenCL and then Vulkan but we'll do OpenGL first. OpenCL not OpenGL. Okay and now with that score out of the way we can see the S25 Ultra is suffering a lot at only 14.7 thousand score here but then somehow the Z Fold 7 is nearly 18 thousand whereby the Exynos 2500 is surpassing 1800. But as we can see from the gaming test, the performance of the Exynos 2500, while it is good, the shader caching is way too aggressive. And now let's repeat the test using the Vulkan API instead. We'll just change it here. Okay. And with that done, we can see the score for Vulcan is kind of weird. The S25 Ultra is the lowest of them all, Exynos 2500 comes second, but somehow the Z Fold 7, even though it is using the same chipset as the Galaxy S25 Ultra, scored the highest. Why? I don't know. Because even if you have the same chipset on different devices, they will be tuned differently. And this is the perfect example of why you shouldn't just buy a phone based on the chipset alone and expect it to perform the same as any other devices 
that has the same chipset. And to double down on that point, you can watch our video where we compare Snapdragon 8 Elite chipsets with the new Dimensity uh, 9400. The video is at the top right corner here. And I highly suggest you to watch the video because we go into a deep dive where we redid a lot of tests for all of the devices that we had. And yeah, even though they have the same chipset, the performance will be different because of how the software is tuned. So now we will move on to the last test, which is Antutu. I have to start the test first and then start yapping a bit because I have really done the test and I don't want to spoil the score for you. By the way, while waiting for all of the tests to be done, I'm playing Pokemon Violet on the Switch 2. Okay, so we can see all of the tests here are done. This Galaxy Z Flip 7 definitely thermal throttled because the temperature reached 42.6 degrees Celsius and we know that the thermal limit for this phone is 42.5. Now that is not an issue with the Exynos 2500 because flip phones you have two screens right here. One, one screen is at the cover display here and then another one in the inner display and you also have a lot more of the components housed within the chipset and the chipset is located somewhere near the camera pump. So it is very common for flip phones to thermal throttle and this is not a representative of how the Exynos 2500 will perform. And one important thing that I want to tell you guys is that Antutu benchmark scores are very stupid because when they show you the overall score at the top there, it's a big number and a lot of people will just use that number to compare against how other phones perform. And the reason why this score is stupid is because it doesn't actually tell you anything. What you need to see is all of the four scores underneath that big number and those scores I would say they are much more important because you can see how the CPU perform independently, the GPU performance independently, the memory performance, which is surprising to see here because usually um, RAM speed benchmarks, they don't really matter that much. And also the UI score. The UI score here doesn't actually mean anything as well because when you expand it to show more details, it's kind of a bunch of BS. So as you can see here, the score for the CPU, the highest is on the S25 Ultra, surprisingly. This is not what we saw on Geekbench. And then the GPU, somehow higher on the S25 Ultra as well. I do know this is the case because it is very aggressive in terms of the wattage on the S25 Ultra. So that's why in benchmarks, the score is high. But the S25 Ultra can never maintain that kind of performance for a long period of time. The Z Fold 7 can maintain it because it is much more conservative in terms of the wattage. So it can maintain high frame rates for a longer period of time if you're going to play games with it. Again, the Exynos 2500, this is the only phone that is using this chipset. So I don't have any proper point of reference. And once again, flip phones are never indicative of how the chipset should perform. And so that's it. That's all of the benchmarks that I want to show here today. Um, yeah, this video is kind of uh, YOLO, I think, because I don't want to make this video, but then a lot of people are asking for it. So I just do a quick test to show you guys how they actually score in the benchmarks. Does all of this score mean anything? No, you should always look at the gaming performance, how long it sustains, what kind of frame rate you can get, especially after like 15 minutes of gaming, because um, for these kind of phones with passive cooling, that is when most probably you're gonna get the more throttling. So yeah, I still think benchmarks are very dumb. So don't believe all of the scores because they're easy to cheat and they don't even mean anything significant. So yeah, that's all for today. Do check out our gaming test of all of these three phones independently. All the links are down in the description below. Check out the review of the Z Fold 7 as well. That is already out. Review for the Z Flip 7 will come soon and yeah. We'll see you guys there.